now, where were we? In the horror genre, death is a constant, but it doesn't always satisfy our thirst for gore. <laughs> Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 lame horror movie deaths. For this list, we're focusing on deaths in horror movies that are painfully lame, with few, if any, redeeming qualities. The following scenes are barely even scary. They're just mostly known as dreadful across the board. <laughs> even so, a spoiler alert is probably worth mentioning. Number 10, Ceiling Drop, Paranormal Activity 4. Like, what the hell? Given the modest $5 million budget of this fourth installment of the Paranormal Activity franchise, nobody really expected high production value. Even so, it's usually the scare tactics that allow some horror films to rise above the rest. But when the Nelson family senses an evil presence in Paranormal Activity 4 and people begin acting a little crazy, Mother Holly receives quite a surprise, but doesn't receive the most inventive of deaths. The initial fly through the air has little shock value, and the subsequent drop to the floor just doesn't cut it. The icing on the cake is the use of a wide angle shot. It leaves the viewer more irritated than fully invested in the scene. Honey, it's under your bed. It's not there. It's under your bed. Number nine, Garbage Day, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part Two. Garbage Day. Building on the momentum of the 1984 film Silent Night, Deadly Night, director Lee Harry took the reins for the inadvertently hilarious sequel. <laughs> Featuring the psychologically damaged Ricky Caldwell, the brother of the original film's antagonist, the narrative presents the deranged killer committing random acts of violence. Are you out of your mind? Very naughty. You killed him! The lamest moment of the film comes during a suburban rampage, as Ricky utters a now infamous line that overrides the horror itself. Garbage day! Perhaps the scene could have been a little more authentic with the inclusion of actual movie blood. Instead, it seems to be more about comedic style than genre substance. <laughs> Number eight, Charles in Charge, Saw Five. Not yet! Don't close the door, it'll set off the timer. In the fifth installment of the iconic Saw franchise, we meet a group of victims, one of whom is an investigative journalist named Charles, who's presumably a smart guy. But due to an ethical failure involving arson, Jigsaw steps in to subject him to a nasty game of life and death. Let's do this f***ing thing before the bombs go off. In an attempt to secure a bomb shelter key, Charles loses his composure, only to be taken down by Luba, who was also part of an arson conspiracy. Stop it! Charles Bravado stands out in this particular scene and leads viewers to anticipate an epic horror death. Yet the deadly explosion we're shown seems like a waste of time, at least given the usual Saw gore. Wait. For disappointed viewers, it's a completely forgettable moment that fails to capitalize on the selling point of the entire franchise. You f***ing bitches, survival of the fittest! Number 7, Fall from Grace, Final Destination 5. Don't worry, Molly. I didn't kill him. After surviving the collapse of the North Bay Bridge, life becomes problematic for Sam Lawton and his girlfriend Molly Harper. However, it's their fellow survivor Peter that ultimately tries to claim Molly's lifespan. But when an FBI agent named Jim Block starts poking around, well, the narrative of Final Destination 5 takes yet another deadly turn. Are you okay? What's going on? It's Peter, he has a gun. <laughs> Unfortunately, Peter's surprise execution of the agent is just downright offensive, and the evidence is in Jim Block's ridiculous fall. Not only is there no blood, but all the guy really does is just fall over and die. That's it. It's Sam's turn. Number six, Wizard Master Fail, A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. In my dreams, I can walk. My legs are strong. In my dreams, I am the Wizard Master. <laughs> 
In the third chapter of the iconic Freddy Krueger franchise, we see that Will Stanton has a unique set of skills, but only in his dreams. In real life, the role-playing game enthusiast doesn't sleep much, and he's also confined to a wheelchair. Even so, he manages to hunt Freddy down in the dream world, but he's not quite on top of his wizardry game. Have a seat. No thanks. I'm fine just the way I am. Unimpressed with the bravado of young Will, Freddy swiftly disposes of the self-proclaimed wizard master. I am the wizard master! However, the kill itself is a massive horror fail, given the lack of gore, and is complemented by a lame scream. <coughs> Most devoted fans of the franchise can probably agree that Will deserved better than such a weak death scene. Sorry, kid. I don't believe in fairy tales. Number 5. Michael Loses His Head – Dino Croc One might be surprised to learn that horror icon Roger Corman actually produced a flick named Dino Croc. Despite his presence, the film contributes to the canon of lame horror deaths early on. The moment arrives when little Michael searches for his three-legged puppy named Lucky. Unfortunately, Dino Croc emerges, and he means business. Michael almost gets away, but like so many ill-fated horror victims, he places himself in the perfect place to be annihilated by the titular monster. It's a setup for a spectacular death, yet the subsequent beheading leans more toward comedy than tragedy, given the weak visual effects and the odd facial expression of the victim. You don't need to be a film scholar to identify the inherent lameness of this scene. Tom? Number 4. Belial Means Business – Basket Case 3 – The Progeny What the hell is that? I don't know. But it's heavy. If you're not familiar with the central narrative of this franchise, it's about a deranged and deformed twin by the name of Belial. Is that you, Belial? Where? I'm coming. In Basket Case 3 The Progeny, he breaks into a police station and delivers one of the more graphic horror moments with his attack on Brennan. And then there's Baxter, who inexplicably falls into Belial's grasp only to receive a nasty face bite. He's alive. He's here. <laughs> and what happens when someone or something violently pulls away at human skin? Well, here, the victim's entire head plops off, which not only provides for a lame visual, but seems rather nonsensical as well. In fact, one could argue that director Frank Henenlotter likely didn't have an anatomy consultant on set. Oh no. Number 3. Death by Compact Disc – Hellraiser 3 – Hell on Earth Shall we begin? There's nothing quite like an ironic death in horror movies. And there are many ways to capitalize on the inherent drama of a gruesome kill. But in Hellraiser 3, director Anthony Hickox takes a unique approach with the DJ, played by real-life club guru Brent Bolthouse. Once Pinhead splits into two different beings, the menacing one wreaks havoc on a club called The Boiler Room. While this particular death scene feels dated through no fault of its own, it's the manner in which the dated objects are used that makes it horribly lame. For such a well-known horror franchise, there's no excuse for the awful imagery of the death by compact disc. And the dark lighting makes it even worse. <laughs> Number 2. Death by Penetrating Corn Cob – Sleepwalkers Travis Sheriff's Department Where's Ira? In horror movies, fans typically appreciate a well-executed and creative kill. But death by corn cob to the back doesn't sound too appealing, even on paper. There's a woman here. She says she's the Brady Kid's mother. And I think she killed Don Robertson! Casting logic aside, director Mick Garris utilizes the corncob kill anyway in his narrative about vampires and virgins. Mary Brady plays a prominent role in the film as the incestuous vampire mother of Charles. And when their feeding is compromised, she uses any means necessary to protect her own. There's blood everywhere! <laughs> Unfortunately for viewers, the idea of corncob penetration from the back makes little sense. 
and the officer's gargling reaction only makes it more troubling. Of course, there's also the inevitable vegetable joke, surprisingly written by the one and only Stephen King. No vegetables, no dessert. Those are the rules. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Take your best shot. Number one, Veggie Matter, Oh My God, Troll 2. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. There's plenty of room for improvisation in the horror genre, especially in B movies. And even the cheesiest of lines can be enhanced by a good performance. This is not the case in Troll 2, which actually has nothing to do with the original film nor does it include actual trolls. However, it does include a supporting character named Arnold that witnesses the wrath of vegetarian goblins, most notably the queen, Credence. Make yourself comfortable. Unsurprisingly, Arnold finds himself in a bit of trouble and attempts to verbalize his concerns. Oh my god! When combined with the ludicrous visuals of a woman who is transformed into vegetables, the overall awfulness of the collective horror in this scene makes for the lamest of all lame horror deaths. Oh my god, what's happening to her? And why can't I move? There, there must be a logical reason for all of this. Shut up! Do you agree with our list? Yes, sir. Which big screen horror death do you think is the most lame? Oh, Jesus God! For more scare-inducing top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. It's all fine.